What's up, everybody? Uh, no, the bot is not up. Uh, this is not a question type stream. Um, the bot did not connect because um, the bot was open before we were actually live. So basically, we connect if we send the bot live, like open the program before. Um, what's, I'm looking, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, if the bot's connected before we start streaming, it fails to connect. Um, I also realized here that my my automation to turn the cube on is not working. Um, it thinks that we're offline on my uh, my home assistant integration, which is interesting. Uh, let's see. I I thought we had this set up. Let's let's take a gander and see what's going on. Um, this is the printer. This is a larger build volume. So the thing that's interesting here is they went with a 230 millimeter Z height and it's a 300 by 300. So it's a good, decent size. Um, the price is interesting. Um, it's definitely on the higher side of what you get. They're advertising a linear rail on the X. I, I have not, like what I'm looking at right now, aside from seeing the product photo, uh, this is my first time seeing it. So I've, I'm not very well versed on their machines. They looked interesting. And we're going to see how the build quality matches up because this could be one of those situations where, yes, it's an expensive printer, but if it actually works as advertised and it's built well, it might be worth the extra money. Um, the only thing that I'm not sure about is if you're, in terms of upgradability, if the touchscreen they have is something that's going to be able to be flashed with Marlin later down the road or, you know, for you guys that like the Clipper, um, or like Clipper, sound like a boomer. The Clipper, you guys like those Clippers, you kids. Um, if it's something that you can easily modify, because we're starting to venture down this road, I'm noticing a lot of uh, a lot of companies, like specifically Creality, um, seem to be moving towards more user friendly stuff, but at the expense of repairability and upgradability in terms of the end user. So, and I I don't like that, especially considering I'm somebody that likes to modify my printers, um, you know, and be able to repair them. And once you start getting into more proprietary things, especially when it comes to the software and then how everything's cabled, you're now getting into territory where you're relying on the manufacturer to provide you with replacement parts versus being able to go and just, you know, do whatever, uh, do whatever you want um, in order to fix your stuff. So, but we're going to see, um, what's going on here. Um, it looks decent. It looks like the assembly time is really quick. Uh, so it looks like it's just like basically the top and the bottom in two complete sets and then the filament sensor or the filament spool holder. Um, it is a little direct drive setup, which I do like it's basic, but Hey, if it works, um, and they properly terminate wires, I'm willing to cut them some slack because I have seen, um, pretty good feedback on these. So we're going to take a look at it and go through that. Um, right now. So I'm going to switch over to the arm cam and we're going to crack this puppy open and, uh, see what's, see what's going on. Um, I might switch over, I might switch over to the wireless mic. Let me, let me do that now. Cause if I'm talking like this, yeah, yeah, it's going to go in and out. So let me grab my wireless mic pack. She tangled. All right, we got we got our wireless mic here. Let me switch over and uh, pop two fresh double A's in because these are probably probably on the lower side. All right. Okay, let's see. Question is, is it going to work on the first try? Or am I going to have to mess with settings? Well, it's been a hot minute since I've used this. All right, let's see. Yeah, this is not a question stream. I will not be answering, uh, like, 
general printer questions. You can ask questions about this printer, and I'll try to answer them. Um, um, let's, let's see. I am now on just the wireless mic. Can you guys hear me okay? We're going to go ahead and put the, the big mic out of the way so it doesn't get in the way of stuff. Can you guys hear me okay? Check, check, one, two. Um, this printer, um, I think I said this, but if you just joined, this printer is actually a review unit, but that literally changes nothing about how brutal or not I am on, on a product. If anybody is watching, you should know that by now. Uh, shout out though, it's Dumb Knight for sending me this. This little knife is friggin' awesome. Um, like, he, uh, <laughs> he was like, hey, this is on sale for like 20 bucks. I was like, hell yeah. I like, I like knives. Ooh. Hell yeah. Why is this making noise? Oh my goodness, this printer. <sighs> you know, you ever forget to like start, a, you started a print and uh, it just ends up being a big pain in the ass? Yeah, that's what I just did. So we'll, we'll start that one up again. Um, all right. Let's see what we have in the box. Okay, we got uh, the the like ultra base knockoff stuff that everybody seems to bundle. Um, some people like these. I don't. I much I much prefer flexi plates. Um, so yeah, just a ultra base style here. Fellow protective film. I am curious to see how they're. Uh, uh, what's the word? We how they're documentation is is the word i'm looking for so here's a little little thank you thing printed on some nice paper very nice very premium uh it looks like they even have an email service at kaiwu 3d.com i'm curious to see how many is anybody watching do you own a printer from kaiwu because this is my first one from them i have heard of them um but i haven't uh i haven't gotten any others this is my first uh kaiwu machine so we're gonna see how it is now I'm getting like Creality esque feels on this, like Deja Vu. It could just be that they're all using the same like place to write their manuals. Um, but it seems pretty decent. Um, it's supposed to have auto leveling as well. Um, oh, they're gonna have used binder clips. Uh, uh, guys. Okay, I, I'm gonna be honest. You're, you're charging. Your normal price is six eighty nine. You're asking five seventy for it. Include a goddamn flex plate at that price point. Come on. Like, just being honest here. Like, you're charging a premium for it. Include a freaking flex plate. You shouldn't be having people use binder clips. It's twenty twenty two. No issue using binder clips to attach their freaking print surface at this point. Like, um, we do have like, what is happening? Why is everything just absolutely, like, fucking up today? Everything. Literally. I am, it's, it's been one of those, one of those just months. I just, I'm tired of everything breaking. Like, dear God. I know what happened was I started both those printers and I tried to start the stream and forgot to check on them. And, yeah, there's boogers on their print beds. So they're causing the prince to screw up. I usually watch them so they don't have problems like that. All right, get off my desk. There we go. She feels pretty sturdy. She feels, she feels pretty skookum. All right. So they have a warning here to set the voltage. Please make sure the printer supply voltage is proper before turning on the printer, okay? Um, we do have, we do have a linear rail here on the X as advertised. Um, let's see. I do see a lot of lube on here. This, this is nice and smooth, like, and this is a nice aluminum piece. This is not like, I think this is probably stamped. Um, I do notice a slight, uh, is that a slight bow in there? Or am I seeing things? I wish I had a straight edge to set on here. I don't have one handy. I feel like, 
I might be seeing things. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out because if this is bowed up, it'll show up when we're trying to level the bed. Um, all right. Let's just take a look at the rest of it. We've got the bed here, and there's no... Okay, so this does have auto-leveling, and there's no springs. I do like this. Um, some people may not like these linear rods, but you know what? I have... I've had quite a few machines on them and they just they work like I'm not going to I'm not going to dig on them. We do have an XT60 for the bed. I uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Um that's not really a connector that's rated for repetitive motion, is it? As far as I know. Um it's more for static mounted situations. All right. So I'm assuming this is going to get screwed in like this. Let's 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 read the manual here. Um all right. So we got all the parts. I'm assuming here's the part package. There's not many screws. They do give you a full Allen key set and four binder clips the glass and the I mean at least I give a USB cable this is very sh this is a short cable um this is like what I would expect to come in like a cheap power bank what is this like a foot foot and a half not even I mean it's be it's better than nothing okay but come on guys um Convince me that it's premium like and and what I'm seeing here is is some cost cutting on stuff. It's like eh. um, Okay, so they do include belt tension springs, uh, which is interesting I'm guessing for if it wears out uh, Let's see are they having me putting these together? Let's see. What does it say pull the printer out of the package and pull the Z axis timing belt to slowly make it raise 15 centimeters oh, Okay, so this, I, I didn't notice it. This is a nice touch. There is, and they have anti-backlash nuts on the Z. Um, ooh. 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 It's like, I think I'm getting back feed from the motors. If I go slower, I don't get it. Um, I spy a mean well. A real mean well. Oh, imagine that. No knockoffs in here. Yeah, that's a that's a legit mean well inside there. I'm like uh, I'm like Creality, who clearly, uh, as far as I know, uh, the Ender 3 V2, the Ender 3 Pro, the CR6. Um, Creality's been updating all their their documentation uh, to show that they don't include mean wells anymore. So just be aware of that. Um, they're including their knockoff. All right, so. They're saying slide this through here, and then we're going to put four M5 by 25s through the bottom. Okay. And then we're going to connect the Y axis motor, the Y axis end stop switch, and then connect the power and the thermistor for the heated bed. And then we're going to put the filament uh, rack. And that that's it. That's all in terms of the build. We're just going to set the power switch for the power supply, and we're going to go through their initial setup. So this is a very quick build. Um, which I appreciate somebody with a lot of stuff going on. Um, I appreciate it. And I do see in the print and we'll go over all this stuff. Um, they are using a BL touch for the auto leveling and I'll take that over no auto leveling any day. All right. So we have, this is kind of awkward to assemble. So I just kind of got that one in there. I'm surprised it did not fall. Um, come on. So there's one here. And I'm not going to tighten these all the way up just yet. I'm just going to get them started. But in terms of assembly, this is pretty dang easy. So that's that that's definitely a value add. I will say that. So, you know, not having to do as much assembly, um, especially if you're building a printer, um, you know, especially if you're setting up a bunch of them for like a print farmer stuff. This is definitely a plus. I'm never going to complain about having assembly that's fast. 
These are interesting. What is this? I don't know what brand the steppers are, but honestly, I really don't care about stepper motor brands. Some people get snobby about that. That's one of the things I don't really care about. Um, most of the cheap ones, they're they're all cheap, and they all get the job done. I've rarely, I can't remember the last time I had a faulty stepper motor, even on like, you know, bottom of the barrel brand like you know Anet or Tronx even. Um, all right, so we got to connect the motor. There's a Y motor plug. Is that label Y? It is. These have the same kind of labels on them that Creality does. Um, like the little, uh, the little like yellow labels. All right, so then we got the XT60 here for the bed. Um, this is a name brand XT60. It says AMAS, which is what I get for my drones. Um, it's a two-part one, so they did use a good quality XT60, and this is proper silicone wire. So, again, I, I want to be fair, like I said, and highlight the good. I'm also going to highlight what I don't think is that great. Um, but, yeah, so, so far my main complaint is like, Come on, guys. You it, it, include a flex plate at this price point and maybe a longer USB cable, you know. But some people could think that's nitpicking. Um, I don't. All right. This does remind me like a Lulzbot type form factor. All right, so I'm gonna set this. Oh, well, that's interesting. It'll rock. Oh, it's okay. So it actually sits on these feet. So when I push on this, it rocks. So it's sitting on all four of these feet. All right, I'm going to switch the switch from 230 to 115. And then uh, that's that's it. We're ready to start messing with it. We're going to put the bed or the put the glass on the bed and uh, start messing with it. Okay. All right. So the belt tension seems pretty good. They do have adjustments on the Y motor here to move the motor forward and back to tension the belt, which again, I like. Do they have that on the X? Hang on, let me get my taze light here to see inside. Um, they do have it on the X too, so um, there, there, there definitely seems to be a good amount of attention to detail um, on this machine here. So that's that's good. So what you want to see, especially on these ones that you know are more like premium. Excuse my autofocus. We're gonna go manual focus here. Um, you do have slotted holes here to adjust the motor uh, left and right here on the X. And this is also present on the Y. Go back to autofocus. And you can see here on the Y, we got the same deal where we got these slotted adjustments. So we do have adjustment here. All right. Yeah, this is a, uh, this I've had for years. I call this the Taze Light because it's literally a flashlight and a uh, and a taser. There's like multiple safeties before it'll actually do the Tazy bit, uh, but it's also a flashlight. But um, I'll give you one guess at where this is made. <laughs> one guess. You get one guess. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So let's go ahead and clip this on. They say to put it in the front left and right. Remo, do not start whining. I swear to God. No. No. Don't do it. All right. Oh, do you guys see this? Not a fan. Not a fan. Um, that means shit's not aligned up correctly um, with the rods. That's going to affect print quality. You guys see this? This is way too much damn slop. The question is, where's the slop coming from? It's not the bearings, it's the bed. Okay, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. You guys see this? A lot of slop. 
the slop is because this isn't tightened down. Now this probably loosened up in shipping. You see it shifting here? So relatively simple fix. I was gonna be like, oh man, we are the bearings not aligned? Nope, it is just the screws that hold this plate to the carriage need to be tightened up. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now, did they, did they mention this and I just glossed over it? They did not. Let's see if there's a troubleshooting section in there. Man, most of their screens in here are in Chinese. Are they dual? Do they have like one that's Chinese? Okay, I think they have dual. All right. I'm trying to see if there's a uh, anything that talks about the bed. Now, this is a 32-bit board. I don't know who makes it. It looks like they've got 4988s on the E and the Z. And then Trinamics on the X and Y. So you can see the Trinamics there on the X and Y. And then those are Allegro 4988s. According to this picture, um, that's what this board will have. Um, but they do give us... A decent amount. This looks kind of like uh, the Robin, just with a different LCD connector. So the thing is, I have a feeling that this printer will be able to run Marlin. Because this looks like it's an LCD that's driven from the CPU, which is good. So, um, yeah. All right, well, let's fix that up. I will say, I probably will keep this little set, because look, at they give you a little holder for it. It's so cute. All right, let's go ahead and tighten this up. This looks like it uses the two and a half, not the three. You think that's a Chi2 board? It it could be. We're going to take it apart, obviously. This is this is TH3D. You know, we don't just look at the printer and, you know, not look at the guts. Like, I like, to, I like you guys to know what you're actually getting. I'm like, some channels that'll just be like, it prints, look it. Ah, go buy it with my affiliate link. Like, no, I want to know what's under the hood because it can print on the first try all you want. Uh, what I'm worried about is, is the damn thing going to last and is it worth buying? And uh, you can't do that without actually looking at the internals. And I'm not singling anybody out. I, there's just a lot of reviewers that don't understand what the hell they're even looking at or what to even check. Um, and they'll recommend printers that are absolute garbage. All right, that's a lot better. All right. Yeah, just need to tighten these up. They really should put something in here because that's, that's, I doubt it's bad assembly. I think it just loosened up from getting shipped. Um, one thing you could do is put a little Loctite on there. Um, that's something they should do, honestly, um, from the factory. But, oh, wait, 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 wait. You guys see this? Ready? You guys ready? Oh, come on. I want a good peel. Give me a good peel. Oh, oh. oh, of course, I'm not going to get a perfect peel. All right. Let's see. Enough with the, the, the random stuff. So it's just telling us what you can do, well, how the screen interface is. Um, it's got Wi-Fi? It's got Wi-Fi. Oh, I don't know about putting this on my network. I could put on my T-Mobile. Because that's literally just a WAN connection. Mm. Literally in the uh, picture, ChinaNet G67. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know, man. All right, let's just let's let's we'll, we'll come back to that. I, it has my I'm intrigued. I think there's an ESP module on here. I saw a socket for it. Yeah, I'm looking in there. There's a little ESP in there. All right, so it says um, after the printer is powered on, there are three options: tool, home, all. Okay, select tool, home, all. Okay. Oh yeah, it's slow as slow as molasses. Oh, man. I, I The board looks very MKS-esque. Oh, and it's, it's got a BL touch. Is it a real BL touch? I don't, I don't think so. I think it's... I think it's a knockoff. I could be wrong, but this looks like... Uh, it's a knockoff. What do you guys think? 
Yeah, it's it's not it's not a real PL touch. It says 3D something. I'm pretty sure that's a knockoff. I'm pretty sure it says 3D touch. And like, look at that. Ugh. Again, better than no auto leveling, but longevity wise, eh. I do like this though, for feeding the filament. I wasn't sure how I what I thought about that, but you know what? This this for ease of use. Okay, so it says now to do um go back. So click back and then hit auto level. Okay, auto level. Could we have just hit auto level? Is it gonna home again? Hardware-wise, though, like, I'll be honest, hardware-wise, this looks like a pretty decent machine. Like, initial thoughts, hardware-wise, it looks like it's pretty decent. Um, even though it's got a BL Touch knockoff, but eh, whatever. At least I'm not going to manually level it. And they solid-mounted it. Um, that 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 3D touch is, is pretty... I hear... All right, so they're saying, okay, so we did the auto level. Um, then it tells us to preheat it. Now, this is good information. While this is you know, probably going to take a couple minutes because it's a BL Touch style probe, they're, they're slow. Um, I can go over the manual here. So uh, this I like. This is a very good tip in general, and I tell everybody that's new. Um, here, Cut your filament at a 45 degree angle. This makes insertion of the filament so much nicer. Um, this is a good tip. Um, so they're basically telling you to preheat, um, how to load the filament. So it says insert the storage card. Hey, let me go back. So pre, they're just telling you pass the filament through the detector module and then insert into the extruder. Okay, so just you know put it in manually. Um, adjust the z-axis offset. So insert the storage card, print, choose auto leveling test file. When printing the first layer, look how well the model attaches the hotbed and adjust the z-offset appropriately. Okay, so it has live z-adjust, so that's a plus. Um, when the filament cannot be attached to printing port well, click z- minus to lower the nozzle, plus uh, z- plus when the nozzle is too close to the hotbed and filament cannot be extruded properly. Um, until the model can be relatively firmly attached on the hotbed. Okay, so they give you examples. So this is pretty good documentation. Um, I, I do I do like this. This is this is good advice in general. Um, and they show you how to do it. There's steps here. So printing, you select the auto leveling test, uh, hit confirm, and then it's like it's probably just some like um, pre setup test file. So that's good. It's it's a good uh, little thing uh, to do. So filament detection function, they're showing you how to how it goes through here. So their um, their directions are pretty well written out. It's better than I expected. I'll tell you that. Um, all right, so we're we're done with this. We're gonna go ahead and preheat. So I'm gonna hit preheat. Um, let's see if I go back. See if the fan works. Is there a layer fan on here? I thought I saw one. Oh, it's mounted sideways. Okay. Um, now I will say the the printer's pretty quiet. Um, I'll give it that. So I like that. All right, fill filament. More. Let's figure out how to how to navigate their their touch screen. It's very dim here. Like it's not just. It's not just like, it's not just the camera. It is actually pretty dim. I don't see any, any way to change it. This LCD screen is very dim. Um, anyway, so let's do preheat. They don't have preheat settings, so I guess I'm going to have to just, okay, so these are the increments. Oh, I can't tap and hold. See, I, I, I don't like this touch screen already. Um, all right, so if I tap this, I'm assuming there's a hotbed. Okay, so we're going to do 60. And then, like, we don't have, like, a status screen here. 
What is it? Oh god, it's doing stuff. What do these buttons even do? It's doing things. I don't know what it's doing, but these things actually do stuff. It's moving the bed forward. Um, that's weird. All right. Is this Chi2 firmware? I've never messed with Chi2. Um, I don't know what this more is. I swear to God, if it's doing another auto level, it's obviously homing XYZ right now. Okay, so uh, that's weird that it's going to be doing stuff. I don't like this screen because, um, like, it's not very easy to navigate. People are like, touch screens are amazing. Yeah, well, if the interface is, is poo-poo, it doesn't matter how pretty it looks. But I, I don't know if you'd be able to put, like, a 128.64 on here, but I you might be able to put Marlon. You might be. I don't know. I'd have to poke around the board. We're going to find that later. But... Before we mess with it, I am going to put, let this preheat. I'm going to pop their SD in, and we're going to do the, the level test. So um, here's a little SD card. It's the same uh, little little no-name ones that Creality's come with. Um, are... Okay, number one. Okay, I'm going to assume that it goes into the board, but there should be a marking here being like, this is for the LCD or a full size card, and this is for the the control board. I know this, but your average person, I was gonna be like, uh, <laughs> there's no adapter. So I'm going to put this in there, and I'm gonna go ahead and mount the spool holder real quick. All right. And these are uh, these are ball end hex keys, so they did spring for the slightly nicer um, Allen keys here, or hex, whatever you want to call them. The keys, ooh, that smells toasty. Nothing like fresh Chinesium in the morning. There's definitely an odor. I'm pretty sure it's just new printer smell. All right. And we're going to use their filament they included. At least they give me a, uh, um, I say give me a spool holder here, or a spool, instead of like the samples that are like just a pain to deal with. All right, I am going to, now this is just my tip. I always like kind of straighten the, the filament out before I put it through because it just makes insertion easier. You can't have it all like too curved, uh, otherwise it makes inserting it really, really difficult. All right. Why are we not going in? There we go. Okay, relatively easy, but uh, the tension on this is not that great. So, uh, like, I was able to easily get it to skip. So I'm just going a little bit slower. But this is this is nice. I do like the ease of loading. All right. The bed is hot, hot, hot. All right, we're going to go and do printing. Um, auto leveling. I'm assuming that's it. Confirm. Oh, the bed's not even at 60 yet. But, but the bed was quite warm, but not, uh, not quite there. We're almost there. So not that fast of a heat up time. It does look nice. I will say it does have a, a definitely an appearance of a more premium machine. What do you guys think? OK, 
curious to know what chat thinks. So, all right, there we go. We're homing. Got some schmoo. Hey, look, I got another set of uh, blue snips that are going to try to take my eye out if I cut anything with them. <laughs> uh, might be a tension. No, it's just a standard. I mean, it's a, it's an aluminum extruder, so it's it's better than plastic. So at least they didn't cheap out there. Um, um, I have a thermal camera, but I it's it's buried somewhere right now. I don't feel like digging it out. It does have a it does have an odor to it. I can't quite put my finger on it. Okay, so they said. So I hit option, baby step. All right, so we're a little high. We're at negative two. Let's see. So the baby stepping is working. Sorry for the shaky camera. I'm trying to... Get it locked in there. Let me see. Take that off. I peel this off so I can see what it's actually on there. Come on. Oh, you guys are just gonna have to work with me. I only have one set of hands here. It is very slow to adjust. Okay, we're at negative 2.2. .2. We're getting some smush on here. I'm pretty happy with that, I think. Oh, I didn't know how long it was going to go for. But apparently... There we go. Okay. I don't know what it's going to print. Is it just going to keep doing that? That looks pretty good. Let's see what it says in the directions. I think I think that's it. Um I mean, I don't know if it's going to like store these settings or not do i have to like let it finish like for it to store the settings i don't know what it's doing right now it's doing another layer okay so if i hit stop confirm so we're at negative 2.2 .2 for the baby step on here. Should we have saved somewhere in the LCD? Tool. More. More just has all those random mystery buttons. Settings. Printing. No, there's no printing setting tool. No, it's pretty, pretty basic. All right, I'm going to print one of their things. At least we have um, baby stepping. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five for the G code file names. And then we've got bird whistle and ghost. It says 30 minutes. Let's do ghost. It says 30 minutes. Because what you can do is. Once, uh, if it, if it is a 30 minute print, then I can go get my print started up while you guys watch this go. How's that? And then we'll take a look at it. Um, is this autofocus working? Yes, it is. All right. So let's see. Ghost 30 min. We are now preheating. All right. I'm going to try to preheat the nozzle. Can I preheat the nozzle while it's. Yeah. Yes. Maybe. Let's see. Or yep, okay, so you can manually do it. Um all right, well this is going to take this is going to heat up. I'm going to get one of my machines going here. 
um because i got parts that need to get out for customers and an event coming up soon uh chris and i are doing like a farmer's market thing here in town so that'll be fun and we're just printing all sorts of cool like knickknacks and stuff that people might like all right but i gotta turn my uh machines back on here Yeah, I got some schmoo on my nozzle. I did just put, uh, did any of you guys get our new uh, bimetal heat brakes for the Kraliotans? I'm very, I'm very much enjoying it. I have one in my, uh, um, I have one in my Ender 5 Plus. I just put that in there. Oh, are we done? We're going to go? We're going to go? It's going to home. I got to put on my Ender 3 Pro. Oh, I was wondering why I couldn't connect to my 5 Plus. I turned the I turned the uh, turned the power switch off at the printer. That might do it. Okay, we're just we're going right into the print. Okay, I I don't like that. Um it does look like we saved our baby step. Yep, we did. Okay. Well, it is it is printing it's doing the thing let me see if i can get a, a close-up here so you guys can see what's going on i'm going to try to lock in the autofocus too so it's not constantly trying to hunt so i i might have it a little close but i'd rather be a little close than too far Yeah, like I was, I was a little close, close with PETG. That's why this one print failed. I'm looking at it. Um, I was a little close on the first layer, and uh, the noozle was colliding. I mean, so far, aside from aside from the rust, roughness of the firmware, here's the thing. Uh, Creative Tech Note. Okay, yes, their firmware is not as polished as I would like it, but at least all their shit is actually working. <laughs> like, unlike the Ender Three. Um, S1 uh, that I did, uh, the firmware just didn't work correctly. This is actually functioning correctly. So, you know, you, you get to charge a premium for a printer and have all your stuff work, or you charge a little bit, and uh, the expectation is the end user is going to have to do some work because, you know, you're you're trading your money for time, you know. Um, as in, you get a cheaper printer... But you're gonna have to get some, put some time into it to get it to be, you know, exactly what you want. If that makes sense, or am I just talking in circles here? Oh, look, it's raining. Impre uh, little, uh, I wish I could like highlight a comment, but I don't have that way to do that with uh, restream. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people that don't like that that are like, I'll take a glass over flex plate, either haven't tried a flex plate or they have something wrong with them. Or they're masochists. Hey, I'm not here to kink shame though. If that's your thing. Go ahead. We do ship to the UK now. It appears your your guys' customs are letting stuff through. As normal. So yes, we, we did reopen up shipping to the, the United Kingdom. Um, also, I saw my buddy Mike Hunt in the chat. And uh, he's over in the UK. And he's, uh, I think his new channel is like 3D Mike or something like that. Um, he's actually the guy I got the chocolate printer from a while back. If you guys remember that stream. Um, I might have removed that stream just because like it had my ex-wife on there. And I didn't want that on there. But... Um, it was a cool printer. So he used to, I think he worked for uh, J Supplied. I think Mike is in, uh, yeah, he's in, he's watching on Facebook like a boomer. Come on, all the cool kids are on YouTube and Discord these days, Mike.
All right, let's see here. Pi support plugin update. I'm talking to myself. I I I so I've been doing the multi stream. I see some people here on Twitch. If you guys are on Twitch or Facebook watching, go ahead and post a comment. Um, because I'm I'm curious to see who's actually watching on these platform. I'm looking to see what so restream is what I'm using. They say I've got one person watching on Twitch and one on Facebook and 62 on YouTube, uh, zero on Twitter. So okay, overall like noise level. Of this printer, I can hear the fans of my other machines way louder. The ones that are across the room versus the one that's right here. So noise level, I'd say this isn't silent, silent. Um, but uh, it's definitely it's definitely quieter than most machines. <laughs> that comment. <laughs> um, yeah, his name is Michael Hunt. He goes by Mike, so it sounds like something when you say both together. And I'm sure he's well aware of how it sounds. <laughs> Um, I had somebody think I was messing with him when the, I, I told them that's what his name was. I was like, nope. <laughs> All right, my under three is starting up a print job. And make sure the schmoo is taken care of. Because that was the issue last time. There was schmoo on my noozle. And nobody likes schmoo on their noozle. My Ziltek gear has been a little trooper. I will say I do not like I do not like that uh um what's what I'm looking for? That they there's no fan ducts, but honestly, it's been a pretty decent little machine since I put in the service, and I'm a little disappointed that I didn't start using it sooner. Um also, if you guys are waiting on tough extruders, the V2 is coming out. Um we should have them in about two to three weeks. Um we completed internal testing and they're great. So if you're looking to uh, get a geared extruder that is also uh, dual gear, um, you know, kind of like Bontech and some other ones. Um, we're going to be updating that with a dual drive gear setup um, instead of the uh, single drive gear. Now, I do still like our V1s, but everybody kept asking us to update the product line, and I was like, you know, you guys are right, um, and they're a little more user friendly, and I think that's going to be the big thing is I found with the dual drive gears, um, it's hard for people to improperly set the tension, which is the number one like pain point, I would say, um, that was felt with the V1, which was a Titan style design. So, um, did your print fuck up? Yes, it did, Krista. That's the one I was restarting. It's going again now. I just restarted it, and then I'm firing up another SpaceX print on my under five plus. And that one's getting ready to start. So I got to get this stuff run. I got 26 parts for SpaceX to run off um, for this next batch coming in. I double check that my bed is not out of whack. We're good. So their parts are huge. Dear God. Uh, which one? The Ender 3 with the pink sparkle. Um, there was some schmoo on the noozle. And it, it, it made it lose steps. Um, it's your system. I, I'm showing the stream is healthy. This is printing nicely. Um, we're going to take a look at this. It says it's 19% done. I am going to, can I speed it up? Let's see. It's got options. There's a speed setting. Um, move speed. Um, okay, I'm gonna do it to to 130%. I'm assuming it's gonna take a sec. All right, so it is actually responding to that. These yeah, these SpaceX they're going down to their headquarters in uh in Texas. So we do like they have they have print jobs that they literally they have to be run on enclosed machines. Um and they take up the basically the entire print bed. They're very large parts. So um, they're for some, uh, like, they didn't have a signed NDA, so I guess I can 
talk about it, but it's like uh, parts for the the older dragon capsules that are going to um, like museums and stuff. They, from what I understand, they can't send them with the the motors. Um, I, I learned they also call them motors. They're not engines. Um, so we're printing parts to basically close up those gaps that will be left um, where the motors were. So it's pretty cool. Um, all right. And this is looking good. No buggers this time. So I shouldn't have any print failures on this one. All right. We are good. Oh, and this one's out of filament. Damn. Do -do -do. Got to get a new roll. Got to put it on the printer. All right. It's burning up a bunch of pet G here. They're all PETG parts. Uh, what are you guys all printing these days? I'm just curious. That print here should be done. We're at 33%. I might. Do you guys want me to... Um, like let it finish or kill it and then we get into tearing into the guts of it i'm almost done swapping out the filament i got my daedalus running and my five plus just doing these jobs and they're they're in petg i need to clean that nozzle that is uh very dirty it's a very dirty nozzle the nozzle's very dirty. Let's not short out the board with our wire brush. Gonna be very careful. I am a professional. I know what I'm doing. I promise. For the most part. All right. There we go. Thank God for filming sensors. Uh, let's see, working now. I'm just looking here. Haven't been printing for two weeks, Chrissy. I'm moving. That's good. Hopefully, you're staying in Texas. I hate moving. I absolutely hate it. Kill it and get to the guts. I am getting kind of impatient. It's already been 13 minutes. We, we, we can look at it. I do kind of want to look and see how the extrusion looks. It looks pretty good. Mm. Okay. My ADHD wins. I'm just trying to give the viewers what they want. Um, I am curious to see if this is going to be able to run Marlin, like in all, in all honesty. Um, cause, uh, hardware wise, it seems pretty nice. Um, I'm not, not going to lie. Let's see. Let's see how this looks. Oh, we're still in manual focus mode. Hang on. Let's take a look and see how the wee ghost Uh, I'm going to have to wait for this to cool. <sighs> I may actually put this in my little print farm here. I do have one spot for a production machine in my office. There's a test a printer I use for testing just sitting there right now. Um, I know these... Uh... Oh, Ben, I thought you were going to move to California. Good. A kid, a kid, don't don't kill me. 
I know you'd never move to California. No one in their right mind at this point would move to California. <laughs> cool it or it can break the bed. I am well aware. Um, we can still take a look at it though. Uh, wait, wait, can I? Uh, I know before anybody asks if somebody has this printer, what size is the bed? Hey, Tor, are you listening? Tor, documentation time. Um, this is a 310 on X and uh, 320 on Y. So we do actually have plates for this. So that would be the same plate we, um, same plate that we use for the, uh, the CR10 V2, V3, and the Pro. So we already have... Uh, I feel attacked. Um, so we already have flex plates for this. All right, there we go. Where is my TH3 safe space? It's mandated here in California. Um, it's 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 in... You work from home, so I, I guess it's in your bedroom? I don't know. I got I got a... I got a you can come here and there's like a, a, you know, a little like storage room. You just put a little sign on it that says safe space. You can go cry in there when people are mean to you. Um, all right. Let's take a look. Now, I always, this always sucks looking at it with a white filament. Um, I almost got to turn the lighting off. So, yeah, uh, 310 by 320. Okay, so layer line wise... I don't know if you guys, how well you can see this. I mean, I my preview looks good here, but obviously YouTube is going to do some compression. Um, looks really good. Um, we did speed up a little, so you can obviously see they have some retractions turned off. Um, we did start getting like a little bit weaker infill when I cranked the speed up. So obviously this extruder is not going to do well when you crank the speed up. You can see right there where I cranked it up. Um, but at the stock settings, it's actually doing pretty good. The infill feels pretty... Like the infill solid. So um I would say just your average print. It's not like, oh my god, like it's amazing. Um it's it's a good it's a good print. Um, you know, it's what I would expect. So on par with other machines. Um I am going to go ahead and unplug this. And I know this is what you guys want. You want to see me take it apart. So let's see how it comes apart. Where's my snips? Oh, they're over here. I misplaced them already. I'm going to go check on the... Well, actually, I don't need to snip it because I'm not going to be needing to move that. I'm just checking on the print here. Our Z offset's looking good. We got no boogers. All right. Our little fidget cubes can, uh, can do their thing. All right. Um, so the question is, how does one get into here? I'm going to assume, uh, so it feels like there's two screws on the bottom here and then these, so I'm assuming these two for the handle need to come out. These two, there's two at the bottom here, these four for the power supply. So I'm assuming if I take these two, these two, the top two, and there's two on the bottom, um, out then I should be able to get into the electronics. Oh, look at this. I just noticed this. That's some shipping damage right there. Ooh. Is that shipping damage, or did they literally send this out like this? That had to have been sent out like that. There's no way in hell. Hang on, let me check the box. There's no sign of, of damage on the packing material here where this would have been. This would have been on this side here there's nothing so they sent it out like that to a reviewer i mean granted i didn't notice it until now but still like that's something that happened at the factory yeah no definitely not shipping damage the boxes the box came perfect uh so yeah they sent it out like that that's amazing that's a pretty good size uh that's a pretty good size hit right there Holy shit. That's a that's a good hit. I mean somebody somebody ding that up. I'm that's gonna bother me. I'm gonna try to straighten that out with my pliers here. Yeah, you guys see that? So they sent it out like that. 
Holy shit. Like... Damn. Yeah, it straight up bent the seal. There's a nice thick coating on here, but... Man, if I bought this, I, I'd be a little upset. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of upset. I wonder if they would send me... I'm going to send them pictures and be like, Hey, would you guys... If, if I was a customer, would you send me out a new cover if I asked for it? Obviously, this is just cosmetic, but still, like, it's the, the principle of the matter. It's a new printer. Like, you know what I mean? At least we know it can take a hit. <laughs> so, you know, silver linings here. Let's look at the positive side. At least we know the printer can take a hit. <laughs> um, damn. It was freeze or doesn't it? Yes, it does because I need to be fair. If I in, approach this from the same way, like if I bought this, I would be asking them for a replacement cover. So I'm going to ask them if they'll send me a replacement cover um, or what what they would do. Like if this would be something they'd exchange it for um, or like a partial refund. Uh, what is this? I think it's like 569 or something like that. Um, I don't have the page in front of me. But. I mean, it's gonna be too hard to swap out. But again, like, would you guys would you guys return this um, if you had gotten a printer with that kind of damage on it? You know, just obviously cosmetic damage, but still, like, it's damage. Yeah, I lost the spool. Go lay down, Remo. Go be a good boy. And there we go. I dropped something. It's officially a stream. I'm channeling my inner Linus. All right. Let's see. Let's see if it's properly grounded. Oh, yeah. Don't you have a Kaiwu tripod? Don't you have a Kaiwu? Yeah, I don't, I don't care that they gave it to me for free. That has nothing to do with it. I'm approaching this as if I bought it. And if I bought it, I'd be like, hey, you guys you guys need to send me either a partial refund. Obviously, I can't do that because I didn't pay anything. But, like, I'm going to ask them, like, what would you do in this case? And will you send me out a replacement? Because um, I would expect them to send out a customer a replacement for something that's that damaged. Yeah, you'd ask for a replacement. As long as mine are only cosmetic... I want to return it. Yeah, I don't think I would return it either. I would just be like, like, if I bought this, I'd be like, hey, can you guys, you know, listen, like, the brand new printer, it's a nice looking printer. It's got a big ding in it. Like, give me like, you know, 50 bucks off or send me a new one. Like, so Tripod, you have Kaiwu printers. What is your opinion on them? Give me, give me your honest opinion. I know you are no bullshit guy like me. Um, all right. So what well, first thing is I'm going to disconnect, I'm disconnecting the ribbon cable here for the LCD. Um, and it's, it, it had like a sticky thing here and this peeled right off. Um, I should have reached in and disconnected this first. So they do have like a retaining clip here. I'm going to make sure that this goes back on here. Um, we're just going to set this off to the side and I'll reaffix it. And I'm going to disconnect the main power coming in here. Now, do you think they tin the wires? I think they tin the wires. We're going to find out. These are very, this is 18 gauge wire feeding this board. This makes no fucking sense. Okay, wires are tinned. Strike one. Okay. Here's, here's where, okay. Here, here's where my, my idiot alarm goes off. Okay. We have 18 gauge wire feeding the, feeding the, the board. Okay. 18 gauge wire feeding the control board and they're tinned, but we have 15 gauge wire feeding the bed. It doesn't matter if you put 15 gauge wire here. If the main wire coming from the power supply is 18 gauge, you're choking the bed. This is stupid. This is absolutely fucking stupid. Like 
this is unsafe, one, the tinning, and two, this is some stupid shit. This is absolutely stupid shit, and for the price, you guys should not be do it, doing this. Like, this is, like, you guys already are buying 15-gauge wire. Just use this to the power supply. You are literally choking out the printer's heat of time by using these 18-gauge wires here, and it, this does not matter now that you use 15 here. You're limited by the smallest wire. So the main power feed is 18, and this is 15. This is bullshit, and this is, like, <laughs> this is, it's, it's fucking stupid. This is absolutely stupid. So, and we've got another wire tied into here. This says F24V. I'm assuming this is the fan. This is fine tying in stuff here, but the tin wires are not. I expected better on here. So we do have what looks to be a, a real mean wheel in here. This does look like a real mean wheel. Um, these are terminated nicely, but like, you guys, come on. Like, yeah, circuit board looks like what I'm used to seeing inside a meanwhile. So I would assume this is a, a, a legit meanwhile. Um, this is labeled Kaiwu TFT-35. So if this board is made by MKS, there's a pretty good chance we'll probably be able to flash Marlin on it. Um, but this is, like, this is stupid. Like, this right here, no wonder the bed's taking forever to heat up, is you're running, I wonder about these are tin, you're running 18-gauge wire to the control board and 15 gauge to the bed you are not gaining any benefit from that 15 gauge and you're probably choking out the machine at this point um I, that's a huge oversight again 10 wires i'm assuming these are going to be the same story probably more 10 freaking wires hmm. maybe i should have streamed this next week when i wasn't already irritated about the whole car situation um, these are not tinned. The hot end wires are not tinned. Um, what's the problem with the tin wires? They, they can catch on fire because they get, as they heat, as they heat and cool, they expand and contract and they crack and they burn up these terminals, especially these cheap ass Chinese terminals. Okay. These are not name brand terminals. Most of these printers, um, unless you're buying a board from us or, or duet that actually gives a shit about what we put on our boards, uh, you're getting cheap no-name terminals. So you got cheap no-name terminals that loosen up over time. Um, coupled with tin wires, this is going to burn up. This is this is unacceptable. It's like a lot of companies do it, but I'm still like, this is stupid, um, especially on a high-end printer. Like just this wiring oversight, you should not be having to change this up. Um, case will probably not fit with ferrules, then put bare wire. I do bare wire on most of my machines. I do do ferrules a lot, <laughs> do-do. Um, I do put ferrules a lot on my builds now, but bare wire will fit in here just fine. Bare wire will be way better and much safer versus this tin shit. And the gauge difference is is a clear indicator that they have no idea what they're doing when it comes to basic electrical common fucking sense. Period. I'm not I'm not even gonna put it up for debate. Period. Like if you knew what you were doing, you would you would know that what you did there was stupid was absolutely fucking stupid. So, um, yeah. I'm wondering, like, okay, and if, if the Kaiwu people, like, guys, this, I'm giving you feedback to help you make a product that isn't as shitty as possible and justify the cost, okay? Because we were doing good up until now, and I'm sorry, but, like, a printer that costs this much should not have these kind of oversights. So I am going to assume that this is an MKS board based on the MOSFET selection. We have the, the Huyi, I think is the brand. Um, I use these on our boards. They're great MOSFETs. Um, and if we look at the uh, little 8266 module, this looks like an 8266. Um, this is hot glued in here, but it does say, um, I'll show you guys. So it does say MKS Robin on the back here where I have to go to manual focus. See right there, MKS Robin Maker Base. So I'm assuming this is a, a modified Robin board. And like I said, if you guys have been watching the channel, MKS does a lot of white labeling for other companies. So if like I'm building a printer, I'm like, hey, I need a control board. I can go to them and they'll make a, a customized version of one of their existing designs uh, to use on my printer. So that's likely what this board is. 
is a variation of one of their Robin boards, which they're they're okay. They're they're decent low cost boards. I'll take them over a big tree tech board any day. Um so but like the tin wires, like that's a the tin wires and the difference in the um the wire gauge is like stupid. That's absolutely stupid. What I've got STM 32 F103 VET6. So, and that's a genuine STM processor right there. Um, your mileage may vary with the silicon shortages. As far as I know, MKS has not been swapping out for the knockoffs, but <laughs> who knows at this point? Um, we got heat sinks on the drivers. I would assume so because low copper count. Um, but yeah, I mean, this looks like the MKS Robin instead of that really thin ribbon cable. Um, they have this. I'd prefer, if we're going to have a ribbon cable going to LCD, I'd prefer this style over the little flat flex ones. Um, yeah, I would assume we're going to be able to put Marlin on here. I'm going to try. I'm going to see if anybody has any firmware started. If not, I'm going to start with a, a nano config and go from there. I am also going to plug this into my computer and see if... Uh, See if we got any Marlin goodness going on here or if it's using some weird thing. So let's, let me plug this in. Remo, you're in the way. Go, go. It's like laying right where my chair needs to go. He's gotten more and more clingy as he's gotten older. Clingy dog. All right, I'm plugging an extension cable into my hub. Let's see, I'm assuming it's gonna power on when I plug in a USB. Oh, look at that. Do we actually have proper isolation of our 5-volt rail? I think we do. Do we have a jumper to set where our 5 volts coming from? Or am I going to have to power this up from the from the uh, power adapter? Mm, I think I'm going to have to... I think I'm going to have to power this up from the power adapter. Uh, the power supply, I mean. Oh, you know what? I've got a little 12 volt wall wart I use for testing. We're just gonna use that. I I am very disappointed with their selection of the wire gauge. That is kind of a deal breaker because at this price point you shouldn't be having to open up the printer and replace something like that. It should just have it properly done. Um pretty sure I just bumped my camera, but we'll be we'll be back in a sec. Hang on, I'm trying to find my where did I put? I was like, I have, I have a wall wart with, uh, with ferrules on it that I use for testing. So like where I just need a power board up. Um, I don't want to bust a meanwhile out. All right. Which is what we're doing right here. So which one's positive? Do they not have these labeled? That's lovely. Well, that's lovely. They don't have which one's positive and negative label unless I'm blind. I don't see. Am I blind? I'm probably not going to be able to get in. I'm assuming it's labeled on the back of the board, but I can't, uh, <laughs> I can't tell. So we're going to look back at the replay and see, uh, which one was positive, which one was negative. Cause I don't want to short this out. Let's see. Assuming the machine is about 300 Watts, 18 gauge is dangerously small. So it is a 350 watt power supply. I would assume, and we can find out what the bed will draw. Um, just get a rough idea by measuring the resistance. So let's let's do that now. Find out how many ohms of resistance the bed is, which will give us how many. Uh, we calculate that by uh, using Ohm's law, and we should be able to just measure the bed by going off these two bed terminals here. So we're just gonna do here is there's my terminal, so it should be close to. So my 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 meter is like point what is it point. 0.15. Now hear an extruder clicking. Today is just not a very good day for me. I'm like, I'm getting aggravated with things not working correctly today. Why are we clicking? 
We are not too close to the bed, so why are we clicking? All right. It's doing it again. Why are we clicking? Okay, so I gotta stop this print again. All right, well, apparently the print guys just hate me today. <sighs> yeah, I am. It's been a week. It's only Tuesday. I am so done. What are we at? We're at 2.17 ohms. So figure about with my pro bleed resistance, we're like 0.1, so like 2.0. Let's just call it 2 ohms, roughly, 2.1. We're going to call it 2.1. Close enough. All right, so. Uh, ohms lock calculator. So we're at 24 volts, 2.1 ohms. Uh, that's 274 watts. 274 watts. Um, <laughs> let's see. Two seventy four, and that's just for the bed. Um, wire sizing chart. I always have to look this up. Um, <laughs> so that is uh, that is eleven point four amps. So let's just say twelve. Um, that should be a minimum, a minimum of like 14, maybe well, 20. I got to find anybody got a good site for this. I always got to look it up. DC. Yeah. 18 gauge is not enough. It's definitely going to get choked. Um, I always got to look this up. I usually go overkill on my wire sizing. So we don't have to worry about voltage drop too much because it's smaller. Um, but like here, current flow. So zero to 20 feet. They're saying this charge saying for 10 amps. Um, 10 amps is a uh, 16 gauge. 15 amps is 14. So 15 is probably okay for the bed, but feeding the board. Um, it's, it's 18. Like, I would say 14, 15, maybe. I mean, 15 is a weird size. It's like a one you usually only find in China. Um, I don't, I've never seen 15 gauges not made in China wire. It's usually you go in increments. It's 12, 14, 16, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, 18 is way too small. Like 18 is not even on this chart, <laughs> you know? So here, zero, here, zero to 20 feet, zero to six feet. Yeah. Um, Anyways, wire gauge is too small. Um, I'm not a fan. Uh, I was looking back. I was going to look back and find the polarity because I don't want to short this out and be stupid. Um, I assume that there'd be markings on the board, but I can't see them where the printer is. So <clears throat> sorry about that. Yeah, I I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of this. Like this this fell apart pretty quick. Um, Kai Wu, like this is pretty pretty serious like oversight on on what is trying to be based on just what you're charging for this printer. Um, you're trying to be a more premium brand, and it looks nice until you start until you start actually you know taking it apart. Um, so let's see here. So it looks like. Um, the positive or the negative was here and the positive was here. Let's see. Yeah. So let's see if they actually use the correct color combination going to the power supply. Um, they did. So red is plus. So, all right. 
Luckily, this is only a one amp adapter. But we just want to power the board up so we can see if it's running Marlin. Because if it is, then, you know, we can ask for some source. Now, I, I, got, I should check their website, too, to see if they actually posted the source. It's just my assumption that if it's a Chinese company, they probably haven't posted the source code. Um, but we'll find out. Let's see. So this should... Okay, so that did power it up. All right. I'll load up uh, Simplify here. And we're going to go ahead and connect. Let's see if it's 115, 200, or if it's 250K. Okay, so uh, let's do an M503. Oh, this is definitely running Marlin. This is definitely running Marlin. There's... There's no way in hell this is not running Marlin. Um, is there a reset button on the board? I'm just looking to see if I can have it like show its initial power up. Um, but yeah, this is definitely Marlin. So M503. Um, if I do M502, um, that is a it is responding. So EEPROM is enabled. M500 is stored. If I do a G28. Yeah, so it's running Marlin. So yeah, um, I would I would assume it's a uh, I would assume it's a it's an MKS board. It's very MKS esque, and the Wi-Fi module is MKS. I'm assuming it's it's just a variation on the Nano. Um, so might be able to get some Marlin goodness on here uh, in terms of like getting rid of their trash software. Um, I'm going to be fair. I don't think this is, I don't think this is a good buy at the price point it is. Um, in terms of setup, it's very quick setup. Um, I'm just going back to their website. What was their website? 569. I don't think, I don't think 569 is worth the price just on, on these issues alone. Now they do have, uh, I totally forgot about this. They have their Wi-Fi, um, their Wi-Fi transmission, what does that even mean? It says Wi-Fi function allows you to control the machine remotely through the slicer software. I'm looking on their website. What does that even mean? Like, like through Cura? Okay, so it says compatible with SD and TF cards. No card adapters required. Okay, so you you're probably able to use the Wi-Fi adapter one. So SD and TF. TF is trans flash. I'm assuming the onboard SD slot. Um, that's that's a nice feature if that does actually work. Um, upgradable function. So they're advertising that you can upgrade it. Okay, so this is these are like different modules and upgrades. I don't know what the hell that is. Um. If you're doing advertising upgrades like that, that means you're going to need to change the firmware. So do they actually have the firmware here? So they have the SD card file. They've got Cura configurations here. The latest Tycoon Max firmware is V213. Okay, we're on 207. Um, for improvements, check here. Is it going to Google Drive? Okay, here. Robin Nano 3.5. So this is a variation on the Robin Nano board. That's good because that means we can probably uh, probably do some stuff. Okay, source code. V110. Is this actually source code? Are they about to like win me back a little bit? We're going to find out. This is actually what appears to be source code. Um, let's see what version of Marlin they're running. Uh, 208. This, okay, so it's a Robin Nano. Okay, so they do actually provide source code. Um, let's see what LCD they have.
Uh, where's I was looking for their probe offsets here. Okay, so their probe offsets, they got a negative 1.8 offset in the code, um, but it's negative 29, uh, so that'd be to the right. Yeah, to the right. Um, probe to the right nozzle has a positive... Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Something... Something's fucky here with their firmware. The 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 probe is to the right of the nozzle on mine, but they have negative twenty nine on the X set. It should be positive twenty nine. Are they doing something weird with the homing direction? Okay, this is weird. They're saying the Z driver type is 2209, 2209. Is this, does this have UR control? Okay, because if this has UR control. Okay, so it, yeah, it homes to max on X and max on Y. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, they did some, they did some, uh, they did not know how to under, they did not know how to set up their firmware. That's why the probe offset is backwards. Um, we're homing that max on X on Y. We're homing to max on X and Y, but we're using the Y min plug and the X min plug. And I'm assuming they inverted the drivers. So it's actually printing backwards, technically. Um, where is, uh, what is it, X home? What's uh, X home direction, min. <laughs> oh my God, this is the same bullshit Creality did. Um, so unlike the Chinese, I actually set my firmware up correctly. Um, this is set up wrong. <laughs> yes, it technically works, but in <laughs> it's homing to max on X and Y, but in the firmware, it's homing to min. So technically, in your slicer, what you see as the front of the printer in your slicer is actually the rear of the bed. It's backwards. This is not properly set up. Um... So yes, it would use negative 29. So it's backwards versus what you're saying. Um, I've seen this before with Creality stuff. This is them clearly not knowing how to properly set things up. So if we do end up putting firmware out for this, it's going to properly set everything up um, just like we did on the Creality machines that did this weird bullshit. Um, but the good news is um, it is running Marlin. So it can be fixed. The question is, what LCD are they using? Right here, so that's MKS Robin TFT. So this looks like it's a Robin. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it should, knock on wood, it should be fairly easy to, um, it should be fairly easy to put Marlin on this. So that's, that's, a, that's a good thing. So yeah, but their firmware is not set up correctly. Um, all right. Okay, so I should probably compile a list of my complaints here. So, one, the good thing is, even though the firmware is not set up correctly, it it looks like we should be able to flash Marlin on here, and it looks like it's a Robin Nano, um, uh, Robin Nano three point five, I think, is what it looks like it's based off of. Um, so they're saying here they have it documented the firmware Robin underscore Nano three five dot bin is the firmware for the printer, so it is, um, that is working. So. I don't know what the Wi-Fi thing is. 
Let me download the user manual here. So this LCD is completely different. This is the latest user manual. This is V2, which does not match the one I got or what's on my printer. Is 1.1 what I have? Is this the older one? This is. Okay, so I have the older manual and the older firmware, which we knew that. But, like, what is the point of the Wi-Fi? That's what I'm trying to figure out. What's the point of the Wi-Fi? Okay, so, like, I should... So this picture is not accurate. You can clearly see here... These are 4988s right here in the manual. This is in this high resolution copy. And these are 2208s, it looks like. So this must be an older, ver an older version of the board. Um, I'm going to probably take mine apart and see what's going on. Um, like take the drivers off. But the question is like, what is the, what's the purpose of the Wi-Fi? So obviously, like we want to put that in. I I'm going to say right now, the, the Wi-Fi... Um, I'm not going to do anything with it. Um, you know what? I've got... Hang on. Do I still have power this? Yeah, I do. So the Wi-Fi should be up. I have a Wi-Fi card. <laughs> Why is Windows being stupid? Oh, because I was clicking the wrong way. I forgot about it. Okay, so let's see. I want to, oh, I got to hook the LCD up. That might help. All right, we're going to take this LCD out of here because I'm going to be messing with this machine. And I'm going to put new, uh, I'm going to put new wiring on it. Let's see. Yeah, their firmware is not correctly set up. Yes, it may work, but by standards of what should be your, zero zero this is not correct so i don't i don't care if anybody disagrees with that there will be more people that agree with that and then disagree with that so fight me <laughs> um i just dropped one of the screws for the lcd so that's unfortunate um let's see oh i found it there we go Oh, so it's like, uh, okay, do you see that MKS Wi-Fi plugin? So it's a Cura thing. So literally, it only it only works with Cura. All right, I mean that's that's a nice to have, but I mean if it's only if it's only for Cura, I want to see what interface it gives us. Um. All right, I got the LCD hooked up to it. I'm gonna power cycle it. So here we go. So the board does run off. It will run off 12 volts. Uh, all right, let's see. Settings, Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi module is being configured. Please wait a moment. So it looks like it's got a mode where I can just connect my computer to it. It says, wait a moment. Ah. Uh... While we're waiting for this to do whatever it's going to do, um, what do you guys think? I'm like, I'm, I'm of the mindset that like, for what they're charging for this and the oversights of the, just the wiring alone, um, I'm not a big fan of it. Okay, so there's no like... There's no like option to put in AP mode like they're showing. All right, well, I'm going to connect it to my little uh, bullshit because uh, there's there's nothing on there other than my, my main WAN port. Um, so I can't really get anything. Let me see. I just got to remember what password I set on there. Okay, so let me 
put this in on this tiny ass little screen here. Is this resistive? I'm pretty sure it is. Um, oh God. Oh man. This is so this is like as painful as uh typing in like your your login on a freaking like smart TV with your remote. It's almost that bad. All right, let's see. Joining network. <laughs> Connected. All right. Let me see if it's got a web interface. Okay, there's there's no web interface. Uh like So what's cloud? So it's got like a a little cloud thing that you can like you can hit unbind. So it is talking out to the internet in some capacity. Jokes on you, I'm gonna reset this. So if anybody wants to use that QR code to try to mess with me, go ahead. Um be my guest. So there's this cloud thing, the interface, so there's a reconnect option, but like the web interface isn't giving me really much of anything here. Um like web view, like Okay, and they do have the firmware source code for the new one. So this is good. So in terms of source code, they're they're on their game, it looks like. Um let's see what their firmware is. Okay, so this is the firmware for the Wi-Fi and for the uh uh for the board. So let's go let's go ahead and update this. I'm gonna go ahead and update the firmware here put that on the SD card here and then I'm assuming I could update the Wi-Fi over the Wi-Fi let's see oh, file error Interesting. All right. I'm going to go ahead and update the firmware. Okay. So TFT update is what I'm used to seeing. The BL touch is freaking out while it's updating. It's now in alarm mode, so it's clicking. Click, 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 click. The question is, trying to find it here. Okay, so now we got new firmware on here. It, it does show that. I'm going to see if I can update the Wi Fi by putting the bin file on here. I'm assuming it's got something in the bootloader that allow it to update the uh, ESP module. That's what I would assume. But if that's not the case, then we're about to find out. Oh, there we go. See, Wi-Fi uploaded. So the bootloader is smart enough, or maybe the firmware is smart enough to realize that uh, if that KW Wi-Fi bin is on there, then we're going to want to upload that to the ESP. And that's only 
So 340k files, so that, that shouldn't take too long, I'd imagine. The Wi-Fi wasn't supported on mine with the new firmware. I mean, honestly, I, I would not use the Wi-Fi. It's a neat little gimmick, but I mean, like, you're just adding on an ESP module. That's an extra, like, 2 or $3 at cost, so whoop de doo Um... I'm just waiting to see this do its thing. Like I'm gonna see if there's an actual interface because right now there's not. There, I will say their documentation on their website is is pretty solid. Um, so like they've got the source code, so like all the stuff I normally would uh, would complain about. So there we go with the new firmware. It looks like we've got. Um, more options here, but still nothing, still nothing to control it. So I'm not getting anything um, on my computer. Like this is all I get. That's it. So uh, it looks like you can just upload stuff from Kira to this. I mean, that's neat, but eh. uh, let's see if the, let's see if the firmware actually works. Um, I don't like this. This this UI is very. Um, PSU Xbox. <laughs> what? That's a Marlin setting. Um. So you can like set the bed there. So this is a little bit nicer, but like. Oh, okay, that's weird. So you got to touch on the actual, like, X, Y, and Z to actually get it to do stuff. And apparently I hit home. Yeah, that's all it is, is so you can set it. I mean, it's neat, but eh, I, I wouldn't... It's not a huge selling. I don't use Cura, and there's a lot of people that don't use Cura. Um, so here's how you know that they have the firmware set up backwards. So you see X is at 121. Um, I do not like this interface. It's really crappy. So if I do a plus... Did they like, did they correctly do this in this firmware? I think they might have. Look at, because I'm actually going to zero now. Okay. I'm going to zero now and it's all the way to the left. So I'm wondering if they actually properly set up the firmware in this newer firmware build. And we can check because they did provide us what should be the source code for this. So maybe just on the older one. Um, you know, they screwed the pooch on that one, but let's see. We're going to take a look. So this is 2092. So this is actually a really, uh, that's weird. That's a new define. Interesting. Um, not a Marlin define. So MKS Wi-Fi. They had this enabled in here, so it's still Robin Nano. Stepper is mic microscopic 32. Um, let's see. They have the power supply stuff in this anyways, enabled by default. Temperature 61. Formbot Vivendo Thermistor. This is really weird. This is really weird. And then the max temp sent to 330? What the hell? Here, okay, so they did actually correct it in this firmware up to here. You see, use max, use X max, use Y max, and then they're using Z min. Okay, so they did actually set this one up correctly. Um, okay, here, look at, so it actually is in 2209s. This is matching this. So we got 2208 standalone and then 4988, 4988. 
That's that's what this board sounds like it has. Okay? This board sounds like it has 4988s on the Z because of the noise it's making, and it sounds like it has 2208s. Um, yeah, I don't... This I, I'm willing to bet if we pull the, the heat sinks off, this board is going to have 2208s in standalone mode. Okay? So that, that initial firmware was just not great. Um... Let's see. Probe offset. See here. 29. It's a positive value, which it should be. Um, so anyways, in terms of like writing firmware for it, this printer, there's enough source code here. Um, while it may not be exactly the identical one that generated that bin file, which is technically in violation of the GPL, they still have enough where if you want to make changes, it's here and it's not going to be like pulling teeth. Um, so I'll give them that. In terms of a printer, like just what you get out of the box um, versus the price. So you're at 569 on their on their website. Um, let's just check Amazon because everybody likes Amazon. Um, they're at 459. Um, yeah, they're at 459 for that and 629. There's two listings here. Um, I'll put those uh, I'll put those links in the description. Uh, give me one second here. But I don't know if I don't know if this justifies the cost. Like I said, I am gonna be fair, but I I don't think the cost versus what you get justified. I think for four fifty nine, there's a twenty five dollar coupon code. Um, that's not bad. So what is that? Four fifty nine minus twenty five. It's like four thirty four. It's not terrible, but it's not like oh my god, that's a good deal. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's not like, oh, that's really, really expensive. Um, it's just not that great of a deal for what you get. Um, I'm curious to know with how they're, uh, I'm curious to know how they're, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? How their support is. Because that's another thing. If their support is actually decent, like they actually have people that will answer the emails that you send them, that is worth something. And that is worth commanding a little bit higher price because you got to pay people. Um, I'm going to play with this printer more before I'm like, nope, it's uh, absolute dog shit. I think at 569, it's a hard sell. I think at 689, it's definitely a hard sell. Um, they're advertising that's on their own website. Um, 689 is supposed to be the normal price. Obviously people do sales crap like this where, Hey, look, it's on sale for 569 when they really just sell it for this price all the time. Um, and then you have like, you know, the Amazon one where it's four fifty nine with a twenty five dollar off. Um it's not a terrible deal, but it's not a deal. Do you know what I mean? And I'm curious to know if anybody else has the same uh has like the same wiring irregularities that mine has, where it's the eighteen gauge going from the power supply to the um, to the board and then 15 to the bed or if I, I don't know um, let's see we sent support emails to Kai with 3D and Puzzler Facebook group for help a week later we have heard nothing from anyone okay and this is from February so I recommend proven machines for me their proofs or reality as possible options There's no bells and whistles but they have a proven track record so yeah I mean this does have bells and whistles on it but if they're not going to reply to your messages and they can't get basic stuff such as proper bed wire gauge. Um, I, I mean, I can't recommend this at this price. I would say, I would say given the shortcomings, given the, the, I mean, the firmware it's slow, but it does actually function. So props up, even though there's some minor nitpicks, like the one it shipped with was homing to min and it was essentially reversed. Um, it still worked. It's not proper, but it does work. Um, the auto leveling works, the baby stepping worked. Um, I did not chest the filament runout sensor, but it's, it's five o'clock and I don't want to go too long. This has already been over two hours. Um, but I will spend more time with this printer. I will spend time with firmware for this machine as well. Um, I'm, I'm torn. I can definitely say right now at the, at the 500 something dollar price point, I, I would not buy this myself. Um, at the 450 or less range, you kind of have my interest peaked. I think where I would be like, I would buy this. Like if I needed another printer of this size in terms of print volume, 
Um, I think my biting point would be like 350 to 400 is where I'd be like, okay, I'll bite, I'll buy it. Even if I got to change the wire out, you know, for the power supply and, you know, update the firmware to something else that's, you know, not theirs. Um, hardware wise, the tin wires and the wire gauge are my two complaints, my two chief complaints. What was the other one? There's one other one. Oh, and not including a flex plate at that price point. Um, if you include a flex plate, I'd be willing to give it an extra 50, 60 bucks if it came with the flex plate. Um, I'm just thinking, make sure I don't miss anything before we wrap this up. Uh, in terms of software, I don't have any complaints. They actually provided source code, so I'll give them uh, like props for that. Like That's really good to see. That's a big thing that I hate dealing with is when companies don't provide the source code. Um, you guys provided multiple versions of the source code. There's more than enough for someone like me um, or somebody that's well-versed with Marlin to sit down and be able to write their own version of Marlin and not have to reverse engineer every goddamn thing. Um, that's a big plus in my book. Uh, the consistency in the branding though, it says they like on the Amazon listing it says 228. I think on their website, it also said 2209. So there's not consistency. I can tell you mine probably has 2208 based on the noise level. And it definitely has, um, 4988s on the Z and the E, which I'm a fan of, to be clear. I am actually a fan of having those more basic drivers on the Z and the E, um, especially if you're running in standalone mode because they provide adequate torque. Um, I like that hybrid approach of the, the 228 or 2209s on the X and Y, and then the cheaper, more basic drivers on the Z and the E because they don't make as much noise. Um, so I think at the end of the day, my, my, I would bite if I needed a printer this size would be around the $400 mark. Um, I'd be willing to go up to 450 if it included a nice flex plate, but it doesn't. Um, but you do have a filament sensor. You do have an auto bed leveling sensor, even though it's a knockoff of a BL touch. Um, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty torn, but the thing I can say right now is my my biting price would be around four hundred dollars for this, um, just because of the build size and the features you get, and knowing that it's going to have ten wires, and my recommendation would be replacing that wire going from the power supply to the printer board. And I'm going to send them an email on the the uh, the support ticket where they reach out to us asking us if we want to take a look at it. I'm going to give them this feedback and see what they say. I'm also going to bring up the dented panel. Um, I don't think this is a an overpriced pile of crap like some other printers I've reviewed on here, um, but for their five sixty something price, absolutely not. It's not a good buy. Um, at like I said, four hundred, and you're looking for a printer that you know the shortcomings are on. Um, it's not that big of a deal. I've dealt with way worse, um, but that'd be at the four hundred dollar price point. So my main thing is if I was buying this. Um, I'd be wanting to spend around $400 on it and that would be me going into it knowing that I'm going to have to change that wire out. Not that big of a deal for me, but I get it is for some. Um, I'm going to tell them that that's the problem. They should, at the very minimum, just change it out to the same 15-gauge wire that they're using on the bed. That They already are buying that 15-gauge wire for the bed. So it's not like they have to then go buy another set of wire or another gauge of wire that they don't already stock. So it's, you know what I mean? Like, I run a business. I understand how it goes. You know, if I were to have to order a different gauge wire, it'd be kind of a pain in the ass. But just use the same wire that you're using on the bed. 18 is too small. Um, and don't tend the wires. Um, yeah, it's only, in my in my opinion, it's only a good buy at around $400 or less. That's that's where I, that's, that's the Tim price that Tim would pay. Um, you know, if I had bought this at the $500 something dollar price point, I would be sending it back. Um, but if I bought at the four hundred dollar price point, and I, you know, knew this going into it, and even, honestly, even if I didn't know it, I have wire laying around for me. It's not that big of a deal. But I, I always evaluate printers based on what do you get, what bull crap do you have to deal with, and is the amount of bull crap, uh, you know, low or high enough based on the price being high or low. So the lower the price, the more bull crap I'm willing to deal with. So, you know, if I got, if my printer price is here, but the amount of like tweaks and stuff I got to do is up here, I'm probably okay with it. Um, but if the price is up here and the amount of bull crap is up here, I'm not going to want to deal with it. You know? So the, the thing is the more money you spend, the less bull crap you should have to deal with. Now this has minor bull crap, but the minor bull crap is in resolution, as in changing out the wires and detinning them. Um, this is something that shouldn't have to be done on a higher end machine. And I would classify this being advertised around 500 plus. I would classify this as a higher end machine um, in terms of a Chinese printer. So um, not absolute crap, has a lot of potential. I think if they brought the price down and left it as is, and people knew what they were getting into, fine. Um, but they need to fix these issues, mainly with the wiring. Um, 
I'll hit the tinned wiring slide if the price came down a little bit and you put 15 gauge wire or 14 gauge wire instead of 18. Like that's my big concern here is that 18 gauge is really small for the current. So, but it has my attention. I'm going to do some work on it and I'm going to mess around with firmware on it. Uh, please don't email us asking when the firmware will be ready. It's ready when it's ready. Um, but I am going to make an effort to mess around and get firmware running on here um, and replace the wire. So, I mean, all things considered, if if my main complaint is that wire, that's a pretty quick fix for myself. Um, and the firmware, not that big of a deal, but still I, I want to highlight the negatives. Um, yeah, and it has a mean well. So there, there's, there's a lot of good here. And then it's like, I see this wire issue and it's staring me down in the face of this wire is too thin. Um, and they're tin, but like everybody tins this stuff. I've been barking up this tree. I will, I will give them feedback. So one of the benefits of if people send us printers, um, you're going to get a, a list from me of here's what you should fix in order for it to get my stamp of approval. Now, if the wire issue was fixed and they weren't using tin wires, I'd be more apt to say, okay, yeah, 500 bucks. It's on the pricier side, but it does work. And it, it has you know, proper termination of the wires and stuff that usually plagues other printers and causes issues for customers. So again, the expectation is you pay more for a machine, you should have to deal with less bullshit. It's that simple. So it, it should be like this. It should not be like this. Okay. Okay. High price, high bullshit. Okay. Low price, low bullshit. Ideal. This is okay. This is okay. This is not okay. So I, I think that's all there is. I'll probably do some uh, streaming once I plug around with the firmware and just kind of mess with it. We'll make some new wires. Um, I'm going to leave the bed at the 15 gauge. 15 gauge is probably going to be fine for that. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of, it's it's like, and this happens with like not just this company, like it's with uh, many of the Chinese printer companies, like they get a lot right and then cost cutting gets in the way and uh, causes potentially, you know, um, uh, what's it called? Um, you know, potentially crippling for the machine. Uh, Brian Vines, let me look up. I like Brian. Brian, Brian is also a, a connoisseur of dad jokes. And so am I. Let's see. Let's see, baby 3d Kaiwu. Hello, 3D please, uh, friends. please don't copyright strike me, Brian. Let's see. Brian, your hair is very long. Let's see. Um, all right. So, yeah, his is smushed. Again, 10 wires, 15 gauge here. His looks like it's 15 and then 18. So, Brian, if you're watching... I'm glad that you're taking notes from me and doing teardowns into the machine. We need more people to do this stuff. Um, I'm so proud. I'm so proud because Brian's a viewer of ours. I don't know if he's watching, but I'm so proud that he's pointing this out. So his is the same as mine. Um, yep. Yeah. Oh, there we go. And that's the Phoenix contact article. Brian, I am so proud right now. Um, Okay, good, good. Um, so at least it's consistent. So it looks like, so his is an older one. I just got this uh, about three weeks ago. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very proud of you, Brian. Very proud of you. So anyways, let's wrap this up. I'm uh, enough of the rambling. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this. The bottom line is for what you get, I don't think it's worth the price um, that they're advertising right now. Um, there's a lot of other machines out there that are, that don't have like these wiring issues for one. Like that's a pretty big thing. I think, like I said, the, the kind of bite price for me, um, if I needed a printer of this size with these features would be about $400. Um, if they could fix the wiring, um, meaning there's no tin wires and the gauge was correct, um, then fine, you know, and, and your support's good, then fine, command a $500 price. But I... I can't recommend it with these current issues. So I'm going to send them a message be like, Hey, you know, decent printer. Like there was a lot of, um, there's a lot of good. There's a lot of good. So we have source code. We have a meanwhile power supply. Um, everything seems to be physically built pretty well. Um, 
the board is something that's supported Marlin. The screen is something that's supported Marlin. Um, there's a, there is a lot of good on here. It's just for what you're paying for it. I would expect these issues with the wiring. This is the main thing that's staring me in the face. The issues with the wiring need to be addressed. Um, because you shouldn't be spending five hundred something dollars on a printer that doesn't have basic stuff correct, like wiring. So, and that's that's where I'm gonna leave it. I think if you guys can snag one of these for four hundred or less, I think at that price point, it is a good machine. It's it's just sad because, while f for me replacing those wires is not that big of a deal, for your average person it is, um, and I recognize that. So I have to look at this from the again price paid versus the issues. Um, and those, in my opinion, are, are pretty big problems, not having correct wire gauge and having the tin wires. Um, the combination of both of those is a very, very bad. Um, so, but that's like the main thing. Everything else they did pretty well. Um, I'll be, I'll be completely honest. Everything else they did pretty well. They got a filament sensor. They got, you know, even though it's a knockoff, they got an auto leveling sensor. They got the solid mounted bed. Um, the, the X axis is nice and smooth with a nice linear rail. Um, the linear rods on the bed are nice and smooth. Um, I have more positive to say about this than I have negatives, but again, I got to approach it from price versus issues. And I think at the $500 price point, it's hard. It's a hard sell. Um, I'm not going to tell you guys to buy it at $500. I would say right around 400, maybe four, 420, 430, maybe. Um, but any higher than that, I don't think it's worth it. There's a lot other, there's a lot more machines out there that offer the same or larger build volume um, that may not look as nice. Like this is a nice looking printer. I'll give them that aesthetically. It's very nice looking. Um, but you know, like the Sierra 10 V2 or V3, if if these were the same price, I'd go for the Sierra 10 V2 or V3, even though it's an older machine with an 8-bit board. Um, I would go with that over this. But again, it's not a pile of crap. It's just the oversights with the wire gauge and the price, you know, I'd expect it to not have <laughs> that thin of wire for the main power feed for a $500 plus machine. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys haven't checked it out already, make sure to join our Discord server, which is discord.th3dstudio.com. Um, we do have Facebook groups, but Facebook groups seem to be kind of going away. Um, Discord is my recommendation. Plus um, myself and most of the people I've talked to, everybody seems to be migrating away from Facebook and I don't blame them. So Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this stream. Sorry, I was kind of all over the place a little bit. Um, appreciate everybody that stopped by. And again, this was provided to us. I was not putting out money and purchasing this. Most of the machines we do purchase on here, but this was given to me, but I, I don't care um, if they have a problem with me being honest with them. So hope you guys appreciate that. Um, I will see you guys on the next stream, which will be tomorrow at 4 p.m. Central Time. And that's our regular Ask Tim. If you guys want to get notified when we go live or we post new videos um there's a link in the video description for getting youtube notifications and we will send out uh emails when we post a new video um that is worth you know getting an email about you know like a new product video or just a fun video in general um or when we do live streams we get emails sent out automatically 30 minutes before they start so you guys can get a notification even if youtube doesn't do its job <laughs> so anyways i need to uh i need to take a break and get some water and I will see you guys tomorrow. And as always, happy printing.